I used to dream about doing the paving job and being a big, you know, a big company. I used to dream about it. So I just think some of my dreams may become true. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can't ride anywhere in Winston Greensboro High Point 31 years, and we put a bunch of material on the ground in 31 years. I don't know. We've been blessed. That's all I can say. And I never in a million years when I started thought if you just told me this was where you're going to be in 30 years, I'd have said you're crazy. So a buddy of mine said, hey, man, he'd been bugging me anyway, trying to get me to look at the paving business, look at the paving business. So he said, I can get you a job shoveling asphalt for $50 a day. I went to work for this guy shoveling asphalt. After a while, I thought, man, I can do this. I can, you know, this is no big deal. He had a little small truck doing patching, little driveways. And I thought, you know, I could do this. But, you know, make a long story short, I'd always wanted my own business anyway. Me and Paige had just actually moved, went to Virginia Beach for the weekend to visit her grandparents. That's where they were from. So we were in Virginia Beach on a Saturday morning sitting at a breakfast table when her grandfather looked at me and said, uh, how you support my granddaughter, son? What are you doing? So I told him what I've been doing. I told him I've been shoveling asphalt for this guy. But I think I was going to try, try it. You know, I think I can do it. So I said, I'm going to try to, you know, get home and try to get me a truck and try to start the paving business. So that was on Saturday morning. So Sunday evening, we're getting ready to leave, go home after the weekend. He walks up to me and hands me a check for $5,000. And he said, here, David, take this check and go start your paving business. I said, no, nah, Mr. Willis, I said, I don't want your check. I don't want your money. I didn't come here for money. I said, I didn't even tell you anything that, you know, for money I didn't. And he said, no, you take it. And he said, as soon as you get going, you start paying me $100 a month until you pay me back until you pay me back. And I said, okay, I can do that. So I went to start beating on doors, just going door to door. Hey, can I give you an estimate on your driveway? Hey, can I give you an estimate on your parking lot? Hey, can I give you an estimate to patch your hot pothole? Hey, you know, just going around handing out cards. And usually I found if I did that for a couple of days, I usually could come up with something to do. You know, that's how I started. And it started just, um, you know, we, we started out with that dump truck and then I went to Lee Boy and bought a little drag box paver and just started working, adding up equipment and you know, adding people and, and walking through doors when they open. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate. I've been very fortunate for 31 years to have very good people working for me. I met David McGee in 2000 and started talking to him about coming to work for him. Went to work for him in 2001. And um, we started the concrete company and we started doing curb and gutter. And of course, we were doing asphalt paving then too. I'm not going to do anybody's driveway any differently than what I would do at my own house. I grew up with the McGee's for a long time. David asked me if I wanted to come and work for the concrete side, which they had just started, and been here really pretty much ever since. I was actually on a um, field trip with my daughter, and Mark called me and asked, hey, we want you to come work for us, you know, run the paving side, the, you know, the bid and the billing and the scheduling. What I tell folks is it's about like bowling. I set up the pins for the boys, and they knock them down. We've continued to grow every year from a small mom and pop's operation, more or less, until we have, I think, like 40 employees now. Until Matt and Josh came along and started running the paper, I was on the job site every day. I remember Dad took me to Webster's one day, said pick out some boots, bought me a pair of boots, and then from that from that summer on, uh, I was in, I was working. I think it was 15. I put him on a concrete crew uh, for the summer, and that. That taught him how to work, because he was out there working with them boys, picking up pins all summer long. Plus, he learned how to dip, and no telling what else he, they taught him how to do over the summer, but uh, he did learn how to work. When I was 13 years old, I mean, I, that's, we worked. I mean, it wasn't like, I didn't, I didn't get to ride around in the truck with dad all day, and you know, go look at jobs and have fun. I didn't get the fun part, he dropped me off. Took me to the store, bought me a pair of boots, and dropped me off, same thing with Matt. And I knew my ultimate goal was I wanted to be on the paper, um, so I, by, I, I bid my time and, you know, did what I needed to do. I, growing up, I remember going out and watching Dad, and um, Dad ran the dummy side, and then Jay Brewer um, run the paper. And Jay Brewer, I'm not going to say was, because he's got me to compete with now, but was the uh, the best paper operator in North Carolina. And he's very methodical, very, he was very, very good at what he did. Uh, um, and he taught me a lot. So and it's beyond paving, he's taught me a lot. When you're running the same machine with two people, you have to be on the same wavelength in your mind because if you don't, you can really tear some stuff up. He'll catch me. If I'm trying to push too hard, he's like, hey, you know, take take a moment, take, you know, let's slow down a little bit. We got time. You know, I'm, I'm all about, I'm a pusher. I'm like Mark. I'm a, I like to go, 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 go. And he's, you know, he's, he's more like our dad, David, uh, you know, hey, take a breather. Let's go. We're all right. We got plenty of time to do it kind of thing. You know, give the boys a second here to relax. He's, you know, he's, he's really good at that machine. When I think of legacy, when I think of, you know, what 
you know, our dad has left for us to take. It's just that level of quality, you know, that just is, that carries around all, you know, everything that we do between, from our office, you know, to our loop man, our shovel man. I've got a little girl now, wife and little girl. And so I have a real opportunity here to continue something that will provide for my family. It's, it's hard to find your place, but, you know, I think we do okay with it, you know, between the four of us. He's built something that we can all come in and work for and that we can be proud of. And I think that makes him so proud. I mean, I look back through all this 31 years, there's been a lot of things that just, I can't tell you why they happened. You know, why this certain person came into my life or why this certain person, you know, this door opened or why, I don't know why it did, it just seemed like it did. People think maybe, I get people ask me all the time, they think I got a silver bullet or something, that I figured something out, that I know something I don't. I told people, I said, I said, I, I said, it feels like to me, the harder I work, the luckier I got. 